Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our weekly investor update. I'm your host, Dan Fiok, Senior Vice President of Investment Banking. We're happy to be back today and bringing you yet another investor update. Joining me today is none other than Justin Scott, Investment Banking Analyst and my co-host for today. Welcome, Justin. Thanks, Dan. Good deal. Well, today we'll be looking at Caribbean Cement Company Limited and Grace Kennedy Group Limited. If you like the content, don't forget to hit the like button and share this video. If this isn't your first time here, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to receive all future notifications. We upload content like this just about once per week. Also, if you're ready to embark on your very first investment journey, you should take that first step with Mayberry, of course. Follow us on social media to learn more about how you can get started today. Okay, well, up first, let's kick off with Carb Cement Limited. Justin, what do you have for us? All right, ladies and gentlemen, so let's get right into it. So the Caribbean Cement Company recently released their six months ended financial statements. It's a really great year for them. Let's let's get let's get right into it. So revenues are up seven percent from fourteen point two billion to fifteen point two billion dollars. Cost of sales are actually down from nine point two billion to seven point four billion dollars. That's a reduction of sixteen percent. Gross profits are up fifty percent, um, while the total operating expenses are are actually have increased five percent slightly from about one point three billion dollars to one point four billion dollars overall resulting in operating profit increase of 68% from $3.2 billion to $5.3 billion. Their pre-tax profits are up 77% from $3 billion to $5.4 billion. And ultimately, their net profits are up 75% up to $4.2 billion, resulting in an earnings per share of $5 per share. So their balance sheet is looking really good. Total assets are up 26% from $31 billion to $39 billion. Total liabilities are up 24% as well from $9 billion to $11.2 billion. And equity is up transitively by 27% from 22 to $28.3 billion. Their coin price is about $64 per share. The P ratio is 7. I think that's really good for the size company that Caribbean Cement is. The growth plans that I have going into that I'm going to get into very soon. And especially from in, in comparison, of course, with all the manufacturing companies we have on the market right now. With a book value of $33, it's above book value, but you're really not going to get it at that price for, for a company like this. Trading EPS of $8.71 and trading earnings of $7.4 billion. So Caribbean Cement is a giant not only in the company, but not only in the country, but in the region as well. And we can expect a whole lot more from them as they announce their expansions. But I'll continue that at the end of the Moving up over to, they pretty much announced their base to be $1.1 billion per quarter, while consistently being all the way up to almost $2 billion per quarter. It's only going to get better from there as soon as they get into the expansions and, and, and really set up themselves and establish themselves further. And now moving on to another slide, we have the quality of profit movements for Caribbean Cement. So they've established their base since the second quarter of 2023 as of about $1.1 billion per quarter, while on the upper end, almost $2 billion per quarter. And I think it's going to remain that way for a long time coming. The price movement has been within a tight band of, say, about like the high 50s to the mid $60, with a low of about um, $51.34 year to date, with a high of $67.28 year to date. But I don't believe it's going to stay within that nice 60 band that um, it's been trading at right now, especially as the market continues to recover from the, from the position we've been putting over the last couple of years, especially with the growth plans they have. So let's actually get into that. So Caribbean Cement recently announced an ambitious $8 billion or $51 million U.S. capital expenditure project. This is the largest investment of the past decade. The main objective of the expansion is to complete their kiln expansions, which is the furnace used to turn the raw materials into cement and implement a dust mitigation program to reduce carbon emissions and undertake an environmental restoration project using floating cement blocks to protect the mangrove trees and other wildlife sanctuaries as a part of their ESG guidelines. Recently, they actually announced a 3% dividend payable to all shareholders as of July 23rd to be paid out on September 3rd. So all of you Caribbean cement shareholders can look out for that. Key details from the announcement they had the other day include the timeline for the major project and its anticipated impact on their financials. As of the end of the March, the company only had about $5.7 billion in cash available, so additional financing for that project, for the expansion project, will be absolutely necessary. And another interesting point is the company's sustainability drive, aimed at reducing carbon emissions from around 670 kilograms per ton to about 400 kilo, 430 kilograms per ton over six years 
However, given that only reduced emissions by like 10 kilograms in the last 18 months, it seems very unlikely they're going to meet that target. So if they're unable to do that now, what they said is they um, they try to achieve these reductions by investing in renewable energy firms to gain the carbon credits to offset those emissions from their core operations. This, in my eyes, is a hint at the possibility of Caribbean Cement buying a stake in a re significant renewable energy company to obtain these carbon credits. Further from there now, it's very important to note that Caribbean Cement's parent company, CMEX, has actually just sold out their entirety of their Dominican Republic operations for about $950 million. So this is the most recent in their divestments of all the other emerging markets that they're trying to really just shed some weight off of. The, so for example, they shed some weight in, in they, shed, they shed some of their companies out in Asia, and they, I believe it was Costa Rica recently, and Domrep just being the most recent now. Now this is really significant to me because Dominican Republic plant was the largest they had in the entire region. Um, they so for, for comparison sake, Dominican Republic produces about two point four million tons of um of cement compared to Jamaica, which at the end of this expansion will only do about one point four million ton, one point three one point four million tons per year. So selling out Domrep, which is one of the largest markets there, is pretty significant. And there are two schools of thought to come from this. Whether Caribbean Cement buy be up for sale as well for that same company, when who's been buying their operations out in Guatemala or whether or not that the operations and the quality of what you know CMEX has from the Caribbean cement operations is so much more worth it to them, considering that it's a listed company, the quality of the aggregates that they get, and all the other benefits that they have in maintaining in Jamaica is worth it to them to maintain it in their portfolio rather than sell it out as they've been doing with the other portfolio companies. So that's some of the interesting things going on with Caribbean cement. If you're a shareholder, you're in for very interesting times. And if you're not, maybe this might be some time to take a good look at Caribbean Cement and to take an interest. Uh, Dan, any thoughts on Caribbean Cement? Yep, this one is definitely a buy, buy, buy. So three thoughts come to my mind, Justin. One, you know, infrastructure is definitely um, what the focus is of the government of Jamaica going forward um, over the next decade. When we think about the need to improve roads, and housing solutions, we really have a lot of capex and you're going to find the government's making a lot more space for infrastructure development and that means we're going to need cement, cement, cement. Second point is this stock is trading at a 7.35 times PE and that's about 36% below the main market average of 10 times. So this stock is undervalued by at least 36% and I expect within the next two to four quarters you're going to see the stock price therefore adjusting back up to about $85. Three, interest rates are going to be trending down, and that naturally is going to result in PEs also increasing on the market. And then I'll give you a fourth one. Whenever I hear about these large international companies thinking of selling, um, we've always seen the price that they uh, garner on the international markets being substantially higher than where the stock is trading on the Jamaican market. And we've seen that before in the past, whether it was Red Stripe, Diageo, Ray Nephew, and most recently even with the CPJ deal where that was sold for $10.50 when the stock was trading at $9. So the, there are four reasons why you need to run and buy Caribbean cement while you can. It's a great company, poised for growth, throwing off lots of cash and now paying dividends since last year for the first time in their 10 year history. So it's a great time to, to go and get yourself a great company. All right, thanks for that. Up next, we wanna take a look at Grace Kennedy Group Limited. And first up, I wanna send a big up and special commendation to Senator the Honorable Don Webby, CD now OJ. Congrats, Don, and congrats also on your financial results. Let's jump into it. So we're looking at GK's results for the six months ended June 30th, 2024. And first up, we can tell you revenues are up 8% to $84 billion for the half year. Now, I remember when GK broke $100 billion per annum, perhaps three, four years ago. Now they're almost doing $100 billion in the half year, $84 billion uh, in the half year, up 8%, and that's uh, due to great performance from the food division, and we'll jump into that in a second. Uh, cost of sales moving similarly by about 8%. Uh, profit before other income jumping 2%, therefore, to $4.275 billion. 
We saw improvement in other income to $2.17 billion. That's a 14% improvement. And the net result is profit from operations are up by 6% to $6.45 billion. Small creep in finance cost uh, to $555 million, um, offset by the growth in the share of results in their associates and JVs, which is now up to $560 million. And the net, net, net is a profit before tax is up by 5% to 6.45 billion dollars for the half year. And the net profit attributable to shareholders similarly up by 6% now to 4.435 billion dollars. This results in an earnings per share for the half year of $4.46. Trailing earnings of um, $8 with the trailing earnings being $8 billion dollars and with a stock price of $73.52 this translates into a PE ratio of 9.12 so that's about 12 percent below the market so this is another stock again that I'm going to predict that we're going to see this price jumping by 15 percent over the next 12 months because GK continues to do exceptionally well they'll benefit from the fall in interest rates we'll see PEs trading up in general and this is a solid solid company. It's really hard to bet against a company like Grace Kennedy that's been around for a century, really growing and strengthening the position in the food business. When we look on the next slide, we can see the breakup of the revenues and we can see that 66.5 billion or approximately 79% of their revenues is coming from the food division. And then we can see what's happening with the banking and insurance and the money services space. Uh, similarly, we can see $4.3 billion of the profitability is also coming from the food trading business. And we can see the next largest earner is money services, which was down marginally, uh, falling to $1.46 billion. We saw some growth in insurance at $975 million and some growth in the banking segment to approximately $600 million. But the food trading division is doing really well, and we've seen growth pretty much in all of the regions that they're operating in, UK, Canada, US, throughout the Caribbean. It's a strong brand, very strong with the diaspora all around the world, I have to say now. And so it's really hard to bet on GK, now making up approximately 45% of their revenues from overseas. So that diversification strategy uh, by region is going very well. We now see them earning a large amount of their revenues outside of Jamaica. And so it's great to see a big conglomerate like GK expanding in the way they're expanding and doing as well as they're doing. If I had one word of advice for Don, I would say, hey, perhaps you should think about breaking out the financial services and insurance business. I would separate it. This group has got to be really massive. It's got over 50 companies in it. And I think Don's doing an exceptional job of keeping it all together. But perhaps, Justin, it's time to think about spinning off the financial services and insurance business. I think it would actually do better for the group. But that being said, performance is still phenomenal. No complaints from me. On the next slide, we see the operating profit by quarter. And you can see that this is a company that's now doing $2 billion per quarter on the regular. And I really do expect to see that continuing to grow in the future. And that explains why the trailing 12-month uh, earnings profits was uh, approximately $8 billion. And so I expect to see that continuing to grow uh, as they expand overseas and strengthen their footprint within Jamaica. And what I like about GK is we always see them out there doing acquisitions. They're not afraid to do it, expanding in the water business, um, expanding in agro processing. And so it's great to see the group growing and expanding in the way they are. Next slide shows the movement in share price. And what we can see here is the share price is traded down to $73.52. In the last year, it's had a low of $60 and a high of $82.90. I expect to see this stock fully increase back into the $85, $90 region within the next six to nine months. And again, as interest rates trend down, we will see the stock break the $100 uh, barrier and continue to grow in the future. So this is a great one to have in your portfolio. You know, it's one of a few companies out there uh, like Caribbean Cement that's about building and producing, uh, and, and we like to see that. It's great to have one of the financial service companies in your portfolio, but they don't truly produce or manufacture. Those are services. Uh, so it's great to see manufacturing, production companies, 
doing exceptionally well. And here are two examples in the form of GK and Caribbean cement. So definitely not too late to go out and get either of them. Justin, your thoughts on GK? Yeah, Dan, I definitely do agree with you. I think it's time for GK to split up some of their services as they are. So, for example, food and trading would be one entity separate from the money services entirely. Uh, so that way it's not impacted by some of the more volatile nature of the of the whole uh, money market as it is right now. You know, if you're even thinking about some of the money services, I know they're pretty impacted by remittances, which aren't as great, which aren't as up as they would have been, say, two years prior, even so, even then. So it would be really great for them to separate that. And then even then, so um, when things are actually back on the up, it's a much more leaner operation. I can really advance with more flow of the time. So I think it would be great for them to do so. Um, but as it is right now, food and trading, as you said, is, is definitely looking great. It's expanded. It's, it's really deepening their reach in the overseas markets. And it's only better from them going from here, especially as they continue to go out and acquire more entities, uh, continue white labeling and... and um, and really specking more into into this into the stations as they are. So yeah, looking forward to seeing what Grace has coming further from here. I think I think we should continue seeing great things from them. Yeah, thanks, Rat. I appreciate that. And it would be an easy way for them to raise additional capital for the bank if they so desired, and for the insurance side of the business. So I think it's something they should think about. But either way, I really like both companies. Uh, I will continue to um, buy Carib Cement and GK both in my top ten. Uh, and in my long-term hold positions. So I certainly look forward to seeing them continue to do well, and I think you guys should consider acquiring them into your portfolios as well, too. Well, that's it for today's discussions. I'd like to thank our viewers, as usual, for tuning in today. Your support is always appreciated. And special thanks to my co-host, Justin, for his invaluable contributions and insight on Carib Cement. Thanks, Justin. If you're curious about updates on our virtual investor forum, then find us on social media. We share our live stream dates and our upcoming guests on our social media pages. Give us a follow to stay up to date and in tune with all things forum related. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mayberry Investments Limited, and click on the bell to receive notifications. Well, remember, wise investors, slow and steady wins the race. Keep safe, everybody. Bye-bye.